Okay, starting off turn number six with Arjun. Um, I think... I think what maybe we'll... Actually, no, that's not a good idea. It's going to say, let me see here, one, two, three, four, five. You know, I didn't think about this earlier when I put these guys on the start tile, or I probably would have put them on that side, because I could have Arjun move over here to the unexplored edge and then pull down the blazing skeleton and try to kill it. It really wouldn't have any impact if I were to make that change now, because after I put them here, literally nothing happened. But... I'm just going to stick with what I did and continue on. So Arjun, uh, there's nothing to attack, so he's just going to uh, explore. So basically he skipped his hero phase for, you know, more or less. So let's update. So he didn't need a surge. He did not move. He did not attack. He did not gain treasure. He did explore. Got a black tile. And see what kind of monster we get. Watch, it'll be a wreath. With the luck I'm having, no. Alright, so it's a ghoul. Place the ghoul on the bone pile of the newly drawn tile. And it's a ghoul. And it was a black tile, so we have an encounter. So we have the blazing skeleton and the ghoul. Alright, so... Encounter time. Howling Ghost. Attack each hero on the active hero's tile. A hero hit by this attack can flip a daily power to prevent the damage. Ugh. Cancel. All right, so the Blazing Skeleton will activate, and it's away from us, so the only thing it can do is move one tile closer. So it'll move down to this bone pile. Now the Ghoul will activate. If the Ghoul's adjacent, it's not. If it's within one tile, it is. It moves adjacent to the closest hero and attacks with Paralyzing Claw. So Arjun's the closest. Now my understanding is that they're supposed to move to the other tile even though that makes more sense to me. I'm going to go with that, because that just makes more sense to me, because otherwise, you know, he has to, like, go around or something, but, eh, I don't know. My understanding is that they're supposed, that they really are supposed to be going from one tile to the other. That's, I do wish the rules were a little more clear on that. Uh, anyway, it's going to do a plus 7 on that attack. Let's hope it doesn't hit, because it'll immobilize Arjun. And that's a 1, so that's just going to be a miss. And there's no consequence for a miss, so that's just going to be that's just gonna be it. Alright, so it's Alyssa's turn, and I really want to take out that Blazing Skeleton, but the ghoul is adjacent, and it has a higher AC, so... Uh, it's it, I like using her attack, her careful attack, with things that have a higher AC because she doesn't have to roll. So it only has one HP. She's just going to ping it to kill it. So it goes down. So goodbye, ghoul. And she will get treasure for that. But uh, let's update. So she didn't need a surge. She attacked. She killed. She gets treasure. So let's deal with that. Glyph of Warding. Okay, I know what this does. All right, so we'll give this to Alyssa. And and actually, we're just going to use... We're just going to play it right now, actually. So the Glyph of Warding, uh, you just place this... Oh, wait, you have to do that instead of attacking. Never mind, I can't use it immediately. I have to... Um, Think here. So that being the case, maybe I'll give this to Arjun. Yeah, I'm gonna give this to Arjun instead. And then we'll, we'll worry about what it does when the time comes. But so she got her treasure. Now she can move. So yeah, let's go ahead and have her move over to this tile. And uh, use her scout to scout the unexplored edge. 
And hey, we got the uh, arcane circle already. So this is the uh, the card we're looking for, or the tile we're looking. Have we got that many already? That doesn't seem right to me. We drew one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Let me do it. Let me count those again. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. It appeared between the... Okay, so I guess, it, I guess it just appeared fairly early. So it could be the 9th, 10th, 11th, or 12th tile. And actually, I think it was the 9th tile because we drew one tile from the bottom at one point. So we got really lucky and we just drew it on the 9th tile. Anyway, no complaining there. But, uh... Let's see here. When the heroes reveal the arcane tile, the Dracolich stands in the chamber ahead. Gravestorm smells adventurers in his lair. The Dracolich roars. Come, tiny adventurers. Let us see if you have the power to challenge Gravestorm. That's how I think he sounds. So we place Gravestorm down. And uh, now we have stuff to do. So, when a t hero reveals the arcane circle, instead of drawing a monster card, find the Gravestorm villain card and place Gravestorm figure on the bone pile. And then he activates at the start of each player's villain phase. Okay, so that part's done. Place the laboratory tile adjacent to an unexplored edge of a tile that is at least four tiles away from the arcane circle. Okay, so now we take the laboratory, and it has to be four tiles away from the arcane circle. So, so starting from the arcane circle, one, two, let's see, one, two, let me see here, one, two, three, four, right? Or does it have to be four and then the arcane circle, or the, and then the laboratory? Place the laboratory tiles in the, at least four tiles away. I think it has to be four tiles and then the laboratory. So one, two, three, four. Man, let me see here. Uh, one, two, three. Three, four, and then, okay, that's how we'll do it. We'll put it up here. And then it's a white tile, so we don't have to do an encounter on that. Let me just count that again. One, two, three, four. Hmm, that's too far away. I mean, I want to get it, I want to get it as far away as it has to be, but no farther. Um... One, two, three, four, five, and then that one, but, hmm, shoot, the layout of my dungeon is working against me. Uh, let's put it over here. still as far away, but I can go around the sliding walls, whereas if I if it's up there I have to walk through there. So let's let's count one, two, three, four, five, and then the so it so it meets the requirement. Alright, now place the Graystorm's phylactery token on the table on the laboratory tile. So that's this thing. And basically, yeah, we'll see what happens. Uh, basically, when you when you take out that phylactery, you, Gravestorm takes an automatic 10 damage, which takes him halfway down. So a hero that is adjacent to the phylactery can destroy it by making an attack during his or her hero phase. So the, the phylactery doesn't have an armor class and or hit points, so all you have to do is just attack it and even if you roll a 1, it, it just, it, you still do the 10 damage to Gravestorm. Alright, anyway, let's continue on here. So, 
Alyssa did explore and she got the white tile or what tile the black that's actually a black tile and we don't place a monster we place gravestorm instead so so we have a gravestorm and Arjun will also have grave storm on his turn and so there will be an encounter and and then the sliding walls are technically still there okay and the ghoul is gone all right just trying to make sure everything is up to date and correct so this doesn't say that we don't have to draw an encounter no, it's not that nice to us. Okay, so now everything's placed. So the next thing that happens is an encounter. And Bubbling Cauldron place each monster one tile closer to the active hero. Okay, well, nothing we can do about it. So we place this one one closer. And I don't know if we have to move the villain closer. Each monster one closer. What about? Let's see here. Just trying to see if there's any mention of that card in the uh, in the FAQ. I don't see it. No, I don't see it. And I don't know if. Uh, Gravestorm counts as a monster. Um, and I don't really want to look through the rules. I don't think he does, and he's plenty hard enough anyway, so it's not like it matters. Alright, so that was the encounter. So now the sliding walls. Um, no, Gravestorm. Gravestorm goes. So. So it says uh, when Gravestorm is encountered, place the dragon, Dragon's Breath token on this card. So I've already done that. There's the Dragon's Breath. So here's his tactics. If the Dragon's Breath token is on this card and Gravestorm is within one tile of two or more heroes, and he's not, he's because uh, he's within one tile of one hero but he's not within one tile of two heroes. So we skip that. If Gravestorm is within one tile of a hero, he is, he attacks the closest hero with a bite. So he's gonna get a plus eight on that attack. Let's just attack and see if it hits and then we'll worry about all that it does. So Gravestorm is attacking Alyssa with the plus eight and definitely hits. So Alyssa takes two damage and you place the hero one tile in the direction of her tri his or her triangle. So he attacked and like knocked her back. And that's it. Okay, so two damage to Alyssa, taking her down to one. Okay, now the sliding walls activates, does nothing, and that is the end of turn number six. And we'll be back with uh, turn number seven, so Gravestorm can finish us off.